Another week, boys, and another exotic mission rotating in. This time, we have Vox Obscura from Season of the Chosen. Now, a few days ago, we put out our guide on the last exotic mission, Presage, and how to complete that mission, how to craft that mission's reward, that being Dead Man's Tale, and our review of it. Today, we're gonna be doing essentially the exact same thing with Vox Obscura and the exotic that's tied to it, Dead Messenger. Now, this was a bit different than Presage, not just in the mission itself, but also in how you go about unlocking all of the weapon traits on dead messenger now i do want to mention in order to play vox obscura you need to own witch queen or season the risen you're also going to need something for unstoppable champions now let's begin now in order to actually begin this mission you need to head on over to the legends tab and the director and you'll see it right there then you'll get dropped into mars d1 style with the quest sneak into the hangar the throwback man now there'll be a couple of cabal enemies and more dogs here for you to kill then you'll see a diamond pointing you to an underground room in this room there will be more enemies and some turrets to take down and then further inside you'll see an interceptor vehicle to steal you'll then use that to blast a hole through the wall and then make your way down into the baron's area now here you need to clear the airfield which is essentially the first encounter of this mission now it does have a time limit of four minutes and 30 seconds so you can't really just chill and vibe you'll have to destroy a goliath tank that's being dropped off by an airship to the right of where you blasted on the door then there's going to be cabal enemies turrets interceptors and an unstoppable champion clear them all out and you can do this on the interceptor but there's risk the interceptor of course can blow up now if your interceptor does blow up there are plates down by the goliath tank where you can actually spawn in more now once you destroy the tank amanda rest in peace will drop off a drake vehicle for you to use you'll then jump inside and then start following the diamond taking out enemies and threshers along the way but the priority should be for you to get to the next area so don't worry about killing literally every cabal now the next area is a darkness zone and you will have to eliminate two more Goliath tanks. Now keep in mind guys, you're still on a timer here. There's gonna be war dogs attacking your vehicle, Scion sniping you from all sides, Thresher's flying around too, which is why I do highly advise having a team with you for this guys. Now amongst all of this, you need to be prioritizing the mission and take out those Goliaths because you have to do that before you can actually start the next step. Once the Goliaths are destroyed though, you'll have to then destroy three towers, but each tower has a shield around it. Now to lower the shields, you'll need to destroy destroy the batteries powering them, which are indicated by three icons. So they're very easy to locate. Use the Drake's main weapon to destroy these. One or two shots should do the trick. And once the shields are down on a single tower, you can destroy it by shooting into an opening at the tower's base. Do this with each of the three towers and the encounter will be complete. Now it's gonna be a bit chaotic during the tower parts because you'll have multiple threshers in the air nonstop shooting at you. So honestly, if you have someone on your team just dedicated to taking those things down, it makes this part a lot easier. But again, Again, having a coordinated team makes all the difference, especially if you're not accustomed to this mission. Now, if your Drake vehicle does get destroyed, there are actually plates that you can spawn more in, and your teammates can also spawn in Drakes for themselves. Now, the next part, you'll have to make your way to the back of the area and blast open the bunker door using the Drake. In this room, you'll have a rally flag if you need it, which brings us into our next encounter. This area is dark and full of cabal, and this time, you are going to be on a 10-minute timer. However, the timer will keep counting down until you defeat the final boss of the mission. So once again, speed and coordination is key. Now your goal here is to hack three terminals indicated by the three diamonds you see on your screen. Each of these terminals are on the lower floor, each in their own separate rooms. Now to access the lower floor, there will be holes you can drop down through on the top floor. While you're navigating to the three terminals, you'll have to deal with lots of cabal, including the guys with the big cleavers, an unstoppable champion, and floor traps that will burn you. You may be like, oh, I can walk across that no you will die now upon getting to a terminal room you have to kill the scion that's in a bubble now you have to jump inside the bubble to do damage to them but doing this will lower the immune shield of the yellow bar scion in that room and after you kill that scion you will then be able to hack the terminal now you can split your fire team up one for each area or you can just hit them all one at a time and again normal box obscura you could probably get away with splitting your team but the harder version of course i would definitely coordinate together now once all terminals are hacked you'll see a pop 
pop up on the left side of the screen, indicating that you now have access to the control room. You then follow the diamond to reach said control room, and once you approach the door to the control room, it will open revealing Cabal and turrets, destroy them, and move forward into the next room. Now, this is the boss room. When you walk in, the boss will spawn in the top of this balcony right there, directly in the center of the room. This boss will hit you with an assortment of attacks, from lightning strikes to putting you in bubbles and mobilizing you, and much more. Now, you can actually do damage to the boss right away, but they'll become immune when you deal a third of their health. Now, to lower the boss's immune shield, you have to kill those same scions that you killed in the terminal rooms, except there are going to be three in this room. Jump inside the bubbles, kill each one of them, one inside the right, another one on the left, and one will be in the center on the top of that balcony. Now, upon dealing with those three, the boss's shield will drop, and you can start doing damage yet again. Now, keep in mind, guys, the boss likes to move around a bunch. Throughout this process, you may see this red piping on the ground. This thing is more than hot. It is super hot. It is so hot, in fact, you will die standing in a well while standing on top of this. Be very careful walking around this thing, guys. There's one on either side. If you happen to die here, that's pretty much it for your teammate. You're not going to be able to rest them. Now, upon the boss taking another third of damage, you'll have the immunity phase again, which is just rinse and repeat, guys. Kill the scions, drop the shield, make sure you deal with those turrets that are spawning in because they will shred you, and then kill the boss. Now, the moment you kill the boss, the timer will go away, and you just have to follow the diamond and shut down the broadcast to essentially finish the quest. Once you hack the terminal, you'll get some dialogue, and a door to your right will open up, revealing a chest with your deep sign dead messenger inside, allowing you to instantly obtain the pattern for it. Now, each completion of the normal or legendary version of this mission will also award an intrinsic upgrade that can be used when crafting dead messenger, similar to Presage and Dead Men's Tale. Now, the other rewards you can get from Vox Obscura are actually these Season of the Risen weapons. Explosive Personality, Recurrent Impact, Under Your Skin, Sweet Sorrow, Thoughtless, and Peace of Mind. Honestly, all of these are amazing. On the topic of grenade launchers, though, Explosive Personality is actually one of my most used GLs inside of PvP of all things. Now, the Tusset Legion's armor set also drops from this exotic mission. Now, in order to get the Catalyst for Dead Messenger, you'll have to complete Vox Obscura on Legendary Difficulty. Now, unlike Dead Man's Tale, there is more reason to run Legend Vox Obscura over the normal version. That's primarily because of the traits right here that are new to Dead Messenger. Previously, Dead Messenger did not have these perks. This is something completely new to this weapon with it now being a craftable exotic. Now, its exotic catalyst is still the same. That's turnabouts. We're using this weapon to break the shield of a Gaban or a Guardian using their Super Bowl grant you an overshot. Now, in order to actually unlock the barrel perks, or in this case, the two perks, the magazine perks, and the stocks, all you need are the intrinsics. And you can get those intrinsics from both the normal and legend version of Vox Obscura. But in order to gain the three different traits here, that being Thresh, Unrelenting, and Demolitionist, you actually have to complete the legend version of Vox Obscura. And every time you complete Vox Obscura on legend, you will get one of these traits. Now, if you're looking to just maximize your efficiency, the best thing to do, guys, is just to run legend three times. Literally do legend Vox Obscura three times. You'll not only get the intrinsic every time you beat this, but you'll also get one of these traits and the catalyst. Now, if you do not have the catalyst, you're going to have to do this four times, which takes us to the legend version of Vox Obscura. Everything is essentially the same. The same timers, the same mechanics, except the difference is everything can kill you much faster. And of course, they're tankier. So having the right build for this is extremely important. The modifiers for legend Vox Obscura include barrier and unstoppable champions. Void threat is the threat. Overcharged grenade launchers with strand and solar being our surges. There's also some other modifiers, which of course makes this activity more difficult. Now, I ran through with a sword because I was actually rocking stronghold with Lament, considering Lament has anti-barrier capabilities. But honestly, guys, just use whatever you want. I'm not saying sword is the best option here by no means. We're just currently on a sword kick. With that being said, though, with it being overcharged grenade launcher, there are so many options, whether it's Wendigo, Anarchy, the new Trials of Osiris grenade launcher, or a number of special grenade launchers you can also use, Cough Cough with a Horde. You've got a lot of options, guys. But again, mechanically, everything is the same here. Now, upon completing Legend Vox Obscura three or four times, depending on if you needed the Catalyst or not, you will now have the ability to apply the intrinsics and then unlock the weapon completely. The question remains, what is the best trait here? Guys, we tried out a number of options. Unrelenting is really nice, considering that you literally are able to top off your health. Great for survivability. Thresh was not that good. Like, I tried utilizing Thresh with Chaos Reach and Geomax and the reworks 
there the geos and i just didn't feel like that trait made this weapon substantially better for my build but demolitionist felt fantastic guys i think demolitionist is by far the best play here for dead messenger i was getting my grenades back so fast especially on arc right where we're getting on traces even on a time class just doing a wall sector i was getting my name back so fast and then when i pair this with fallen sunstar on warlocks the ability output was insane now i know what you're saying cross why would i use this over forbearance look i get it i completely understand forbearance is very very strong and and I very much love that grenade launcher. We are going to be doing a side-by-side -side comparison. A 1v1, if you will. Between Forbearance and Dead Messenger. And right now, most of you are already saying Forbearance is the clear winner. Which I get. Dead Messenger is kind of a hard sell. But, we're talking the difference between three waves versus one. Granted, if you have Forbearance or Chain Reaction and Ambitious Assassin, well, then you just make everything go kablooey. But, base, Dead Messenger has more girth. And when we combine its ability to snag those multi-kills with demolitionists i was actually really surprised how often i was able to top off my own abilities so guys good luck this week by the way if you need a fire team we do have a discord feel free to come by guys lots of folks are going to be attempting this mission and other missions for the weeks to come as well as even things like seasonal activities fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right <laughs>